Hey guys, I've seen so many people online over the last week or so having major issues after updating Final Cut Pro to 10.5, and I wish I had made this video a few weeks ago because maybe it might have helped you and might have saved some of you a few headaches. But I'm here now to talk about why you shouldn't upgrade Final Cut Pro X yet, but also to go over a few tips for when you do decide to update Final Cut Pro. So if you're asking yourself the question, should I update Final Cut Pro? Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have your answer. Let's jump into it. I need to just start by saying that the points I'll be making in this video, as well as the tips for when you do update Final Cut Pro, don't just apply to version 10.5. Everything in this video will apply to any updates of Final Cut Pro in the future as well. So let's talk about a few of the reasons why you should not upgrade. Incompatible plugins. A lot of plugin developers haven't had the chance to update their plugins right after Apple releases an update to Final Cut Pro. So you might experience a red plugin not working error like this. The best way to solve this problem is to contact the plugin developer's support team and tell them what version of Final Cut Pro you're running and get them to tell you whether or not it's compatible. Or depending on your circumstances, you might be able to fix this problem yourself. I did a video called how to fix the red plugin not working error in Final Cut Pro if you want to know how to do that. I'll link to it in the description below. Another reason why you might not want to upgrade just yet is that installed plugins can disappear. Your plugins, effects, transitions, and titles are all stored in the movies folder under motion templates in the relevant folders. And in some cases, these folders have disappeared. So if you've built up a collection of plugins and effects, you might kiss those goodbye. One of the most frustrating issues I've personally experienced after updating Final Cut Pro was a sudden incompatibility with some video codecs. For me, it was when Apple dropped native support for the DNX HD codec. Imagine editing a 26 minute TV show where about 30% of the footage comes from the broadcaster in DNX HD. Suddenly, all of that footage is black. I couldn't relink the footage, I had to convert it to a new codec and replace every single shot individually. Another big reason not to update yet is that updated libraries can't be opened with previous versions of Final Cut Pro. When you update to the new version of Final Cut Pro and open up a library, Final Cut Pro will ask you if you want to update the library and you have no choice but to update it if you want to open that library. Once updated, you can't open it in a previous version of Final Cut Pro. So if you experience any of these other issues and then you roll back to a previous version of Final Cut Pro, you won't be able to open that library again. The most important golden rule is that you should never update Final Cut Pro in the middle of a project. I learned the hard way years ago by upgrading Final Cut Pro the day before the TV show I was working on was meant to be delivered for broadcast. I ended up needing to find another computer with the same version of Final Cut Pro that I had, and then I opened up an older automatic backup and I had to redo some of the editing work to meet the deadline. It was a nightmare. It's not all doom and gloom though. The benefits of updating often give us access to new features, improved performance, and better compatibility with some codecs. So when the time comes to upgrade, I have a few tips for you on how to upgrade safely and how to minimize the number of issues that you might experience. Tip number one is to make a time machine backup. With a time machine backup, if things go south, you can always restore your Mac to the state it was in before. I personally do this before any major Apple updates and Final Cut Pro updates. Tip number two is to back up the Final Cut Pro app so that you can roll back to the previous version if you need to. To back up the Final Cut Pro app, head over to the Applications folder, right click on Final Cut Pro and click on Compress. That will zip the app and when it's done, you'll have a zip folder here that you can rename to the Final Cut Pro version number that you currently have. Doing this will let you update Final Cut Pro to test it out, and if you experience any of the issues I mentioned earlier, you can delete the new version and unzip the folder to roll back to the previous version. Tip number three is to back up your plugins and effects. If you lose your collection of plugins and effects, reinstalling them will be a huge pain in the ass, especially if you have a bunch of free plugins that you'll need to go and find again. Speaking of free plugins, if you haven't already, please check out my video on the 10 best free plugins for Final Cut Pro. There are some really great plugins in there, so I'll link to that in the description down below. I personally back up my plugins and effects by copying the entire Motion Templates folder in the Movies folder to an external hard drive. If you update Final Cut Pro and for some reason you lose all your plugins, you can simply just copy this folder back into the Movies folder. Tip number four is to open a duplicate of your library. Like I mentioned earlier, if you open a library with a new version of Final Cut Pro, you'll need to update the library file. And if you roll back to a previous version of Final Cut Pro, you won't be able to open this library again. I would either create a new library or duplicate an existing library by selecting it and hitting Command D and then opening that in the new version. This way you leave the original unaffected until you know that the new update is working properly. Tip number five is to do your research before upgrading. 
it would be a good idea to look online either on forums or Facebook groups to see what issues other people are having with the updates and whether Apple has released an update with bug fixes or not. If you follow these tips, you'll minimize the number of headaches you might experience after upgrading Final Cut Pro. I've also seen that some people haven't experienced any issues at all with the new update, and that's fantastic. If you are one of those people, please let me know in the comments down below. If you have already upgraded and you are experiencing issues with the new version, please comment as well and share some of the problems that you've been experiencing. I hope that this video was helpful to you. If it was, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and hit that notification bell so that you get notified when I post new videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one.